So, thanks for the introduction, James. Um, as mentioned, what I want to talk to you all about tonight is the importance of self-awareness and self-review in sales. And it essentially stems from a personal experience which I have, which is why I want to share um, this topic with you this evening. Um, I joined my previous organisation as an SDR or a, a BDR. It took me about five months to get promoted into a, a closing role, so an account executive position. Um, that's quite a quick time, five months. I was pretty happy at the time. I had transitioned into a phase where I could finally manage the entire sales cycle from A to B, and, you know, speak to prospects about everything which we did as an organization. And within six weeks of getting promoted, I closed my, my first deal. And just to give you guys context, the average the average deal length was about three months in my previous organisation. So for me to transition into that position, close a deal within six weeks, I was, you know, I was a bit of a rock star at the time within the organisation. I remember getting a, a shout out from my CFO talking about, oh, you know, Rory's so ahead of Ramp, he's doing really well. You know, everybody should be seeking feedback from Rory. And I remember the deal so so vividly as well. It was with Renault. I cold called the prospects. I got the prospects. I got the main decision maker into a meeting, I conducted a 30 minute discovery session with the prospect, I delivered an hour's pitch presentation, and after a couple of email negotiations, the deal was closed, and I remember the right seed coming through, and you guys who are you know, new, to, new to the account executive role, when you get that first right seed through, or the first DocuSign signature, it, like, you feel great, you, you do feel great. And I then didn't close another deal for about six months, so yeah, I didn't close another deal for about six months. So I had such a rise to fame, you could call it, and then I didn't deliver. And it took me about halfway through that six month period to realize that my self review process just wasn't adequate enough to the environment which we work in. And we all work in such a fast paced sales environment. You can go through your working week and you just don't dedicate time to yourself. And it made me very self aware and it made me realize that if I'm going to improve, I need to actually improve myself. And I remember asking myself the question, like, what do I need to do to improve? Ironically, I needed to improve my self-improvement process. So I remember starting to work very closely with two enterprise account executives in, in my previous organization. Um, they shadowed a lot of my calls. I shadowed a lot of their calls. I started to seek feedback on a very frequent basis. I started to understand the processes that they were doing which were driving success and it's amazing what you do in sales when you're behind target and you're not delivering. Simple things such as not asking open-ended questions. They were listening to my calls and they would say to me, why are you asking so many close questions for? And I'd be like, I didn't, I didn't really know that I was doing that. So for me, it was just about working with these people and absorbing their knowledge. So I started to work on my discovery framework, I started to work on delivering insight to prospect pain, telling stories within the process. And that kind of three month period where I was halfway through that stage, it really taught me about the importance of analyzing mistakes and actually finding the good in mistakes. In sales, we're so configured to have such a positive mindset that we actually forget that we drive the most benefit from analyzing mistakes and seeking out mistakes. Mistakes are essentially lessons. They enable you to develop and they enable you to grow. And I think the earlier we can get into a regular process of analysing our mistakes and driving value from mistakes, the better we will become. And I've since moulded that self-review process. Yes, I initially worked with enterprise account executives. Um, I've now joined a new organisation. I sell to a different persona. So it's very important for me to understand what is working well from my point of view. So what I do now, I have a, a weekly self-review process. I just think that a monthly one-to-one -one with your manager just simply isn't enough time. Like, we have to be dedicating more time to ourselves. Like, at the end of the day, you're the most important person in your career. Like, yes, we work for teams. Yes, we work for businesses. Yes, we want to deliver targets, etc. But if you want to improve, you need to dedicate time to yourself. And what I do now, every single week, so at the start of the week, I've got my notepad, which we all have a notepad where we write notes during our conversations. I cancel out a little box in the right-hand corner, and I call it my mistake box. And it's about two or three lines. So what I'll do on every single meeting that I perform or every single conversation that I have, whether it be internal or, or external, 
I will essentially log the mistakes that I'm making. So I will understand what actions I performed which didn't actually achieve a positive outcome. And it can be quite straightforward. It can be, you know, I'm repeating myself, um, I'm not asking questions after delivering a statement, just very small things which in sales, you know, they, they mean a lot in terms of building value to customers. And what I do every 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon, I block out 30 minutes in my calendar and it, it's my time. It's my time to understand and observe and analyze where I can improve. And I split that 30 minutes into three sections. So I have the first 10 minutes of going back through my mistake boxes and actually writing a kind of a log of all of the mistakes that I've made. The second 10 minutes is prioritizing those mistakes. So actually looking at those mistakes and thinking, is there a common thread of the mistakes that I'm making? Is there mistakes which I know are actually detrimental to the sales cycle which I'm delivering? And then the final 10 minutes is just observing and understanding what I want to take into the next week. You know, is there something which I can do to improve myself as a sales contributor? So for example, this week I got a little yellow sticky note and I put it on my computer and it was simply slow down and talk less because I had a couple of conversations last week where I just rambled on and I got off the call and I thought to myself, I must have spoken about 80% of the time in that conversation, like, like what am I doing? Like, I need to take a, take a step back. I think it might stem from joining a new organisation, information overload, you just want to tell the, the prospect everything. Um, but that's my process and I think it's, it's very important. And there's a, there's a quote in a book called Black Box Thinking which some of you may have read. And it says, we cover up mistakes not only to protect ourselves from others, but to protect us from ourselves. And I think that's very true. I think in sales, you really need to hunt for those mistakes and see mistakes as lessons and learnings. When you grow up and you make a mistake, you kind of go, oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. You know, the teacher's gonna tell me off, my parents are gonna tell me off. Um, but actually mistakes are really good. You can take so much value from mistakes. And I think, you know, from my perspective, the earlier you can implement a regular self-review process into your week, the, the more benefit you're going to drive from a self-improvement point of view. And I think that's, you know, the message which I'm trying to get across really is it, you know, why is it that failing and making mistakes is, is so misunderstood when it comes to learning? And I actually went for dinner with my, my old man and my sister last night and I got chatting to my dad and I said, you know, I'm speaking at an event tomorrow about self-awareness and self-review. And uh, he said something to me, and I think one of my colleagues is going to laugh at this because it's, uh, it's quite a cheesy quote. Um, but it's, feedback is the breakfast of champions, whether it's positive or negative, but how often do you feed back on yourself? And, you know, I want to challenge every single one of you in the room to really think about that. Like, how often do you feed back on yourself and, and what you're doing every single week? A monthly one-to-one -one with your manager isn't enough time. You need to be incorporating a regular framework for you, and it's definitely going to help you because it's... It just gives me so much focus going into every week, knowing that this is what I'm doing to, to become a better sales contributor. Um, so from my point of view, it would be redundant of me not to end the, the speech about feedback on this. Let me know how I did tonight, and uh, any positives or negatives I'll be uh, willing to hear.